check, 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 one, two. Okay, it is um, Tuesday, September 12th, 2023, and this is a question I am getting a lot, and that is, how do I access a volume at price information, VAP information in Sierra chart programmatically? So that's what we're going to cover here. Um, first of all, what, what, what do we have on the screen here? Well, over here on this left side, we have a footprint chart um, of the ES. And if you don't know what a footprint chart, essentially what it's showing is the transacted volume. So already executed that is happening in the market. Uh, so for this market, the ES, uh, we have 15-minute uh, bar period here. So each bar is representing 15 minutes of time. And in this bar, we have number of contracts that were executed on the bid on the left and then the number of contracts executed on the ask or the offer on the right. So you can see at this price level, 45, 22, 25. Uh, we had eight contracts execute on the bid so far for this time period and zero contracts execute on the right on the ask so far and likewise up here at 45 24 75 we've got nine on the offer and none on the bid so how do I read these in well so that's a footprint what is volume at price uh, volume at price or VAP that's the container that Sierra chart offers us to be able to access these volumes that are existing at each price tick. So by uh, exposing that to us, we can actually go through here and open this up and look at the various volumes on both the bid and the ask in total and perform our own calculations if needed. So that's what we're going to build here on the right side here. I have Vim. Um, I have this. Uh, this is from the last coding stream, but um, we can save this as uh, let's save this file as uh, tutorial 5.cpp. And all I have here is the Sierra chart header file um, include we are declaring the name of this DLL we are declaring our main execution function uh, message a uh, logging object string just so that we can spit out uh, log data and then our default section which is simply setting the graph name of the study to be tutorial 5 VAP and the graph region to be the main price graph, otherwise known as zero, graph region zero. So right now we have really just a skeleton here. If you want to know more about this, check out tutorial one. Uh, but we can go ahead and start implementing our examination of volume at price uh, right here. So first thing we want to do is uh, create a variable that will be used as a container or structure to access volume at price information. And um, actually, let me let me split this here and open up Sierra chart.h. And I think it's yeah, SC structures VAP container. This this is the structure right here. Oops. Um, this is the structure right here. You, you'll you have this in your own uh, CR chart installation folder in the ACS source folder. You'll see vapcontainer.h. You can go in and examine this yourself on your end, but basically it's dec they're declaring this structure which has a price and ticks, uh, total volume for the bar, um, the bid volume, ask volume, and number of trades. Actually, that's not for the bar, I should say. It's for the price level within a bar. So this is volume at price. So it's not representative for the whole bar, but it's actually one row out of the however many rows are here. Um, that's what this is representing. And we're going to use this structure as we um, basically traverse and apples on lows. Uh, I think they're doing an investor conference right now, or not investor conference, there's some kind of product conference going on right now, so that's kind of interesting. We'll check that out later, but um, we're going to be using this VAP price v2 uh, container to access those various data within a single bar and the volume of price arrays. So the way we do that is we actually have to declare uh, VAM container, and the way we do that is we're going to use the const s volume at price v2, so essentially exactly the name of the structure that's been declared here, and we're going to give it a name. Actually, we're going to make a pointer to it, um, and we're going to call the pointer pvap, 
or pvap for pointer. We're going to set it to null. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and grab the most recent bar, um, the number of price levels that exist in this most recent bar, because we're going to need to know how many there are so that we can iterate through them programmatically. Um, if we just hard code it to, I don't know, 5 or 10, well, then we'd start here at the bottom at 0 and go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we wouldn't get all the way through. We want to know programmatically how many different price levels exist within this bar, and then uh, we'll go ahead and iterate through all of them, and that'll all give us a full, complete, thorough analysis of that bar. So in order to get the number of price levels at at a specific bar, there's a function Sierra chart exposes called get size at bar. So what we can do is store that um, in a in an integer. So get number of price levels in most recent bar, um, and we can just call it int num price levels is equal to sc dot volume at price for bars get size at bar index and what we can pass here is either the last visible index or the last or the array size of the total data array um, well let's go ahead and start with something really simple let's just do the the last index so sc dot array size minus one will give us the very very most recent uh, bar index that that would provide the number of price levels so let's go ahead and do that um, I'm actually going to pause here and I'm going to uh, create a, uh, a dump to the log of what this number is being provided to us so that we can do a sanity check to see if this is correct. So rather than going on to implement uh, the actual thing, I'm going to just go ahead and spit this out as a way to double check that we are getting what we expect here. So I'm going to just set message.format um, and I'm going to say num price levels at or equals that and then I'm going to put num price levels the integer we just set right here I'm gonna spit it out right there and then we'll say sc dot add message to log of message and now we can go ahead and go to analysis studies actually analysis build custom study and we'll need to select file tutorial 5 and we'll do a remote build And it succeeded. Now, if it if you're getting something other than this, then you may have a typo uh, if you're following along. So let's go ahead and go to Analysis Studies, and then I'll add Custom Study. And then I'm going to be looking for the Tutorial 5 uh, in the list that pops up here. So um, where's Tutorial, 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 Frozen Tundra? Look at all this stuff. Where is it? There it is at the very bottom, Tutorial 5. And we are going to pop this up, and I don't see anything. So let me go to my window. Let's open the message log, and I'll bring that down here. And there you go. Um, number of price levels, 24. So we do have it there. Uh, that's great. So I wonder if there are actually 24. And you notice if I move around, um, it's not really changing. It's still 24 price levels. So let's go ahead and change the code. I don't think I need this VAP container uh, for the time being. I'm just going to minimize this definition here. Instead of doing size, let's go ahead and do sc.index of last visible bar, which is an interesting little variable that it gets exposed. Um, so if you scroll to the, to the left, for example, uh, this is the last visible bar. That's the index that'll be uh, passed through. To here so um, let's go ahead and compile that that went ahead and succeeded and then let's go ahead and hit refresh and you can see number of price levels 24 15 31 41 45 19. So uh, you can see these numbers here changing as I run through 17. Um, and if I go back, I should get 19 and 17. So it's it's counting. Let's, let's count. Where's one that's smaller? Maybe this one over here is a little bit smaller 
So I have fewer things to count. 14. So let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it appears this is working correctly. The number of price levels is being calculated correctly. If we go over here, I expect it to be more than 40 or 50. Uh, there it is, 48. So let me jump to the end here, and there's the number of price levels on the current bar. So this is working as expected right here. So that's great. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and iterate through those price levels. So um, this is uh, print out number of price levels for bar and next thing we want to do is actually go ahead and loop through all the price levels on that bar. So we're going to use a for loop for that. It's going to look like for integer i equals zero and while i is less than the num of price levels <clears throat> we want to increment i and i at zero is actually going to be the very first row and i at num price levels minus one is going to be this one the top row up here same for this bar same for this bar this will be zero this will be whatever this is 40 or 30. this will be zero this will be 50 or whatever that is um, and likewise here i think this was 24 so this will be zero this will be 23. it'll be num price levels minus one because we're zero indexed so we're going to loop through from zero to whatever number of price levels are and what we want to do is grab the vap that sierra has stored at that price level and we're going to pass it into, or we're going to pass this pointer to a function that's going to assign this pointer to point at the VAP container sitting at that price level, which we can then read. So it'll be a read-only situation. We won't be able to modify these using this technique, but what we can do is read them and perform calculations on them. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead in our for loop. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab um, sc dot volume at price for bars get vap that's volume at price element at index and then we want to pass in the index that we're at well let's let's reuse this index sc index of last visible bar index of last visible bar I've got to spell it correctly and then we want to pass in the index the tick index that is within that bar, which is actually going to be our i. And then we want to pass in um, the the container, the VAP container we want to set this to. And so we actually need to dereference our pointer, um, or, or rather pass it, not dereference, I should say. We should pass the address of our pointer uh, to the function so that it can set the pointer correctly to that VAP container. So rather than just passing PVAP here, we're going to pass the address of PVAP here. This might just be a little quirk for Sierra chart, but um, so there we go. We have that and I'm actually going to take, we, we, I think we're pretty solid on the number of price levels. Let me just copy this over here. And then instead of saying, um, I'll just say, uh, I, which is the index within that bar that we're at, um, let's find out what the total volume is. That, that'll also be an integer. Well, what it'll be is PVAP volume. Uh, let's go ahead and compile this and see if this builds. So build, and there's the remote build succeeding. And then there you can see, so there's 24 rows here and you can see the total volume for the 23rd element which is the very last one is 13 and you see how that matches up with the total volume 0 plus 13 is 13 and then look at this 147 plus 238 is that uh, what is this 385 I wonder if there's a rounding situation here that's interesting let's go to the uh, very beginning and see if we have 26 um, for the for the bottom one we do have 26 and then we have 76 for the first one you see how that is 76 plus 0 and then here 126 plus 35 uh, jumped around 126 plus 35 that's jumping around pretty quick here oh actually we had a different uh, bar open up that's what happened um, so now we have a different bar opening up so you can see on the bottom we have a lot of volume and up here we have three 
so the last one is index 7, and that is set to three contracts. And then we have 3418. Uh, that gives us the 52 right there. And yeah, this is, this looks correct. And at the zero, we have 37, which is this 37 right down here. So this is how we're getting. And if we scroll backwards, because of the way that we implemented that, we're actually reading through um, and whatever the current most rightmost bar is. So that's how we're getting through that. But what if we wanted to look at um, just bid volume, for example? Well, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and do this bid volume and then pvap ask volume and so now what i'm expecting to see here is that for this level this index within this bar oh, that's represented by i we have this bid volume and this ask volume that was completed was executed let's go ahead and and compile that and see what that looks like Okay, that compiled. Let's take a look at our log. And so we have 0 by 5 on the uh, 16th element. And that's correct, 0 by 5. And then we have 61 by 115 down here, and that's 61 by 115. Good. And then we have 175 by 180, and there's 175 by 180, and so on and so forth. I'm sure if we go to the top, it'll be zero by or 37 by 0, and there it is, 37 on the bid and zero contracts on the ask, So uh, with 17 total price levels. So um, that is how you step through and analyze uh, the volume happening at each level within a certain bar and you can make your own calculations here you can make your own totals you can make your own you can use this information trans transform it translate it and you know put it into a subgraph or something else um, you can see the number of trades that went off uh, at each price you can convert the price in ticks uh, that we saw here price in ticks that we saw right here and the definition of uh, this VAP V2 container, you can convert this into a decimal price. You can pretty much do whatever you want here, but remember this is read-only. And um, if you want to see more than just the most recent bar, then you'll need to put this loop into a loop and loop through the bars that you do want to actually look through. So if you wanted to see like the last three bars, you couldn't just pass... Um, index of last visible bar, you'd have to put this in a loop and go through the last three bars if that's what you wanted to do. Anyways, I get this question very frequently, so I hope that this helps clear it up and, and show you how to use the VAP container to read through volume at price levels on any instrument you're loading in CR chart.